Last week we took a look at my three favorite drills for learning isolations, but once you've learned this trick, the obvious question is, what do you do with them? Drex here from DrexFactor.com, and today I'm sharing with you my top five favorite poi tricks that use isolations. Let's see where that crazy anti-gravity magic takes us. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know exactly when I drop a new video. Before we dive in, I just want to take a moment to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, e Amazing Lights, Flow Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can visit them all on the web by following the links down in the description of this video. Number one, the buzzsaw isolation. Let's admit it, all of us really learn how to do isolations in order to do this trick right here. It was the first use for isolations in the poi world, and it's still a stunning and attention-grabbing trick. A lot of people compare this trick to cranking the pedals of a bicycle, spinning the hands and poi heads around in a way that seems to defy gravity. I will confess that I am way more partial to the wall plane version of this trick, where you get to look at the audience as you're performing the isolation, but the buzzsaw version is still an absolute classic. Number two, linear isolations. Okay, so clearly this trick kind of stretches the bounds of what we could really call an isolation. While linear isolations are not actually technically isolated themselves, they do include this beautiful moment when switching from top to bottom and side to side that certainly captures the feeling of an isolation for a moment. I actually did a tutorial on this move a couple months ago and I'm quite fond of using it to transition back and forth between flowers and isolations at the body center. For an extra fun challenge, you can incorporate pirouettes, body tracing, and many other variations into these linear isolations. See how many different ways you can find to get those poi heads and hands to stick together as you're moving them around. Once you start looking for places where you can get that stuck together feeling out of the poi moving across your body, you'll start to see them everywhere. Number three, isolated weaves. Years ago, I remember people talking about these in online forums for months, and everybody seemed to agree that the trick was possible, but I'd never seen it done. Then it popped up in a video that Zan Moore posted, and it was everything that I had hoped for. The gravity-defying nonsense of an isolation, coupled with the move that everybody thinks of when they think of poi spinning. It's also a phenomenal challenge, because in order to perform it, you have to not just be able to isolate, but switch which hand is on which side of your body as you do it. If you haven't already, check out the video I did last week on isolation drills and work to perfect the Alien John drill. It is absolutely essential to getting this trick down. For years, this trick was really the platonic ideal of impossible tech poi in my head, and when I finally got it down, I felt as though I'd crossed some mystical border into arriving as a tech poi spinner. Give this one a try, and see if it gives you the same impression. Number four, love lacing. Again, this one really stretches the boundaries of what we'd consider an isolated move to be, but there is a method to my madness here. To put it as simply as possible, love lacing uses a lot of the same skills that isolations do. You have to find a balance point between the momentum and drag on the poi in order to perform them. Really, when you get right down to it, if you were to uncross your arms from a love lace, you'd wind up with a standard buzzsaw isolation. So these two tricks are not that different from each other. It's also a great example of a class of moves called inversion. These used to be much more in vogue in the tech poi world. They're no longer as popular, but they do represent a fun challenge for anybody who wants to move their poi through very tight spaces. Number five, anti-brids. Yeah, so I'm totally sneaking more than one move into this last one. Sorry, I, I really couldn't choose between them. First up is horizontal cat eye versus isolation, which for my money is still one of the hardest poi tricks I've ever had to learn and is packed with such a wow factor that both poi enthusiasts and muggles alike instantly get what an amazing trick it is. I remember back when I could count on my fingers how many people there were in the entire world that could do this trick. And of course, when I nearly threw out my shoulder trying to learn how to do it. Learning a horizontal cat eye is one thing, but you don't really know for sure that your hand path is clean until you put it together with an isolation. Once you do that, the trick is just absolute magic. And for those of us who are into gunslingers, it also has an equivalent anti-brid, isolation versus a six pedal gunslinger anti-spin flower. Now I've seen a lot of people try to pass off static spin versus six pedal gunslingers over the years, but the relationship between the hand and the poi head just gets lost if you try and do the trick this way. And there's actually some pretty simple math behind this. Since gunslingers have the length of the poi, you wind up doing twice as many beats going around the hand path of the same size. A six pedal gunslinger anti-spin flower has only six pedals because because now the poi has two ends, so each end is really doing three pedals. Three pedal anti-spin flowers have two downbeats to them, so they're the closest gunslinger equivalent to cat eyes, which have only one downbeat. 
It's pretty easy to see the difference if you put the isolation up against the Gunslinger flower. The relationship is nice and clean, and the Gunslinger flower traces out a beautiful six petal flower. This trick is currently one of my absolute favorites. Cool, so those were five of my favorite poi tricks that use or are inspired by isolations. What are some of your favorites? Let me know down in the comments. What other poi tricks would you like to see me cover in this series? I'd really love to know. Want more pointers on getting isolations down? I have a brand new course up on my learning site that is completely devoted to isolations. I cover point by point every method I know for learning isolations, as well as basic isolation tricks, transitions, and even some more advanced uses for them. Head on over to learn.drexfactor.com to check that out. Before I send you guys off, I just want to send out some massive thanks to my awesome supporters on Patreon. Your support makes this channel and the videos on it possible. If you dug this video, please leave me a like and subscribe to see more like it in the future by clicking here. Over here are some other videos that you may enjoy, including a playlist of videos that are just like the one that you just watched. Finally, if you like the work I do, please consider signing up to support my work over on Patreon by clicking down here or heading over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. Thanks so much for watching and have a good one. Peace.